God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Shout for the victory. I said shout for the victory. Glory to God. Yeah. Oh, devil, you can't have my mind. I think we ought to sing that again. And I think you ought to shout it to the devil. Devil, you can't have my mind. You might as well stop wasting your time. I'm going to tell you, some of you, the devil been up in your head trying to rob your peace, rob your joy, trying to discourage you and depress you, but you need to speak it out to the devil today. Say, you can't have my mind. I'm a child of God. I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. I claim victory over my mind. I claim peace over my mind. I'm a child of God and royal blood flows in my veins. Let's sing it one more time. I don't want just the choir to be singing. I want everybody in the congregation to sing it. I want you to declare it to hell today. Devil, you're not having my mind. You've tried, but you're not going to have it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a child of God. belongs to me.
Thank you, Jesus. Someone said, Pastor, what's all the clapping and all the shouting about? We're just happy about what Jesus is doing. L listen, listen to me. The reason why we clap and the reason why we shout is we are creating an atmosphere. An atmosphere is important. We're creating an atmosphere for the Lord to work. Now, now, the devil all week long has been messing with some of your minds. Speaking into your mind, speaking into your thoughts, messing with your emotions, trying to scare you to death. And you've been 
You've been speaking things to yourself that no, you don't think anybody else can hear. But I'm going to tell you something. When you start speaking stuff out, the spirit world begins to hear it. The spirit world begins to hear it. And if the devil can get you to start agreeing with fear, agreeing with, with, with the trouble that you're going in, then you give him home court advantage. Because fear is the exact opposite of faith. Faith is knowing God's able to take care of the situation. Fear is believing that what the enemy's doing in your life is gonna come to pass. Now, now I was talking to Brother, Brother Phillips the other day and he told me something. I, I'm not a coon hunter, but after he told me that, I might become one. He said, when you're hunting coons and you're hunting them in a tournament, when you turn the coon out, after they start firing off on that raccoon, you gotta sit there and be quiet. And they're timing that coon, coon dog, see how long it takes to tree the coon. But the reason you gotta be quiet, he said, because if you start yipping and hollering at that coon, it gets that coon dog fired up and it makes him want, want to hunt all the harder. Isn't that right? Wants to make, it makes him want to hunt all the harder and he gets to running and hunting after them coon. But I'm gonna tell you something. I got to thinking, you know what? That, that's, that's what they do at the ball games. They, they, the reason there's a home court advantage is because people get to hollering and screaming for their home team and it gets the home team fired it up and they think, well, I'm gonna play just a little bit harder. But you know what I say, if there's a home court advantage in a basketball tournament, there's a home court advantage in the house of God. And when you walk into the house of God, you shouldn't sit there and be silent. You ought to be clapping your hands, lifting up your voice, shout, dancing, running the aisle, say, get them, Jesus, get them, Jesus, get them, Jesus. I walked in here with trouble, Jesus, but I know you're gonna take care of it. I walked in here discouraged, Jesus, but I know before I leave, I'm gonna get some joy. Woo. I'm going to tell you, there's home field advantage in this house today because people are reach, reaching out in faith saying, I know God's going to do it. I believe God's going to take care of it. I, I came in with a need, but I know God's going to fix that need. You, you, you've just got to start believing it and you've got to start speaking it out. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Aren't you thankful for what the Lord is doing in this revival? People getting baptized, people getting the Holy Ghost, people getting delivered. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're so happy to have Brother and Sister Phillips with us. We want Brother Phillips to come this morning, this afternoon, preach to us. How many wants to help the preacher today? Amen. Tuesday night, seven o'clock. Back in the house of the Lord for revival services. You be here and bring somebody with you in Jesus' name. God bless you, Brother Phillips. Come on, let's give it unto Jesus. Thankful. Come on, I'm thankful. I like it when God starts. I'm when, I like it when the man of God starts stepping on your message. I'd love it. I don't know about you. I just like it. Look, man, this is better than peanut butter. See, something ain't good until you just get it all over you. In times, you, gotta, you just got to get saturated in the anointing of God. And once God begins to saturate you, there's something that happens. Have you ever watched a magnet when you take a magnet and there are shivers of metal that uh, that's everywhere and then you take that magnet and just begin to wave it and everything starts contracting to that magnet. You know why? Because there is a power source that is drawing everything that is not tied, tied down. It's drawing it out. It's the same way whenever you get the Holy Ghost. Come on, the enemy, he tries to come at you and attack you. Why? Because he's trying to be a... He's trying to attack you set in his life. Hallelujah. It's an honor to be here. I'm thankful for what the Holy Ghost is doing. Let's go to the book of 2 Kings, the 18th chapter. Hallelujah. 
believe God's about to do something in our midst this morning. Hallelujah, God. Young man, if you'll let the Holy Ghost order your steps, he will blow your mind. Come on, let's try it, son. You've been wrestling with some spirits and you've been wrestling with some things that has been trying to keep you, ca keep you captive and hold you bound. But I know a God who has come to set you free. He's here. There's an old hurt, son, that is right here. And if you'll open up your heart, he will heal you of this hurt today in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I'm going to say this, okay? We, uh, are we going to see how far we're going to get, okay? Uh, 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 2 Kings 18. And we're going to start reading in verse 28. When you got it, say, I got it. Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spake, saying, Hear the word of the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let, he, uh, neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Har hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me. Then eat ye every man of his own vine and every one of his fig of his fig tree, and drink every one of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like unto like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil, oil and olive and honey, that you may live and not die, and hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuaded you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. I want to talk to us a little while this morning about defeating the voice within. Come on, defeating the voice within. Until you defeat it, it's always going to scream at you, and it's never going to stop. It's never going to get better until you put it to flight. Come on, let's I'll just give him a hand clap of praise right, right as you're being seated. Thank you, thank you, thank you for standing. My daddy was plowing a mule one time, and he was about 10 years old, and he told me the story. And he said, son, he said, I was, I was coming with that old mule, and in South Georgia, they have what they call a coach whip snake. And, and they are real thin, but yet they get real long. And they will come up to you and they will raise their head and blow at you. Daddy said, son, I was as scared as him as I was a bear. And, and my daddy said, son, you go run that snake and he'll leave you alone. And he said, daddy, I am afraid. And then, and then, grand, and then granddaddy Philip said, son, you either go run that snake or you're going to have to whip me. Come on. Daddy said, I knew better. I better take off running. And he said, the first time that I run the snake, he run from me, and then he come right back. And he said, I would have to stop the mule and run that snake until I got to a point that I run him. And, and he never run back at me again. You know why? Because I took the fear of his appearance and, and his voice away from me. And once you begin to take that appearance away, and once you begin to take that voice away, that, that is trying to get the best of you, that is trying to run you in the ground, that is trying to keep you from the power of God, that is trying to keep you out of the anointing of God. Come on, somewhere, you gotta stand up and stand your ground and say, wait a minute, devil, hold on. You're not coming in here. You're not getting this house. You, hey, you're not getting anything that Jesus, he has given me we do have to understand that God is, hey he is an author of faith he is the author and finisher of our faith and what God has put in you and the work that he has started in you he is not going to stop until he has completed it 
In 1 Corinthians, it says in 14.10, there are, it may be so, many kinds of voices in the world, and, not, and none of them is without signification. Go back and look at a turkey hunter when he sets up and he gets in his blind and he's covered up with camouflage. He's waiting and he's screaming at that gobbler and he's yapping at that gobbler and he sounds like a hen and he keeps chirping and he keeps going until he turns that hen, or, I mean until he turns that gobbler away from the true thing. That, that gobbler is coming to a false voice and then once it comes to a false voice and it gets in range, he becomes a trophy for the for the hunter. Come on, there, there is a voice and it's trying to pull us away from the voice. It's trying to pull us away from our worship. It's trying to pull us away from our prayer. It's trying to pull us away from reading the word of God. It's trying to keep us out of the house of God. And if that spirit can stand up and really take dominion over you, he is after your dominion. He is after your praise. He is after your peace. He is after your family. Come on, somewhere. We must put in the silence. We must put in the hey. Hey, look, it ain't time to stop. It ain't time to quit. We, hey, look, church, we got a battle to win. We got a city to take. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, will my silence send someone to hell? It's pretty sober, ain't it? Will my silence send someone to hell? If I forbear opening my mouth, is it going to send somebody to hell? There is an adversary, huh? and he's wanting everything that you have. He's not going to stop. He's not going to play dead. He gets into your mind, and he sets up, and then he says a word, and he backs off. He's after the peace of God. That, that is in you. Genesis 27 and 18. And he came unto his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? This is Jacob. There was a curse of Rebekah. <clears throat> Jacob said, My father will curse me. And, and Rebecca said, only let the curse be, uh, be upon me, my son. He wants here. And if he can get here, then he can get here. And if he can get here, then he can get into your feet and you'll walk out of the house of God and never come back again. Here is where we get in trouble. We are not discerning the voice of Jacob and the field of Esau. There's power to be had. There are miracles that are ready to be worked. There are people that are ready to be filled with, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost in this city. We are, uh, look, there are people here, they are dying, lost without God. Uh, they have no hope. They are looking for a way out. And we have the answer. But yet there is another voice that is on the other side screaming at them saying, give up. Come on, give up. Look, I don't have time to give up. T Heaven is closer today than it was yesterday. And if I give up today, I'll give up tomorrow and I'll give up the next day. I don't have time to quit church. I don't have time to quit praying. I don't have time to quit worshiping God. I don't know about you. I've got to touch heaven. i got to walk with God. i got to live for God. And yet we are in a generation that, uh, that said if it feels good, do it. So we are not discerning the voice of Jacob and the field of Esau. And yet our adversary is coming in and he's wearing out our mind and he's wearing out our feelings and he's trying to get the best of us. He wants to wrestle us down because he is not satisfied until he gets everything that you have. And once we quit wrestling, it's over. 
See, this is going to touch your body, and there's been a pressure that's been sitting here. And this is coming off your body, and it's coming off your household. See us. I see the hand of the Lord stepping in, and there's peace coming into the house, and peace coming into the house, and peace coming into the house. In, in the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Yes, I see one you've been praying for over and over and over and over. They, uh, they're about to make a move and head into the house of God. You, uh, you watch what the Holy Ghost does. Come on. Come on, folks. If we don't silence the enemy's voice, he'll silence the voice of the Lord. Hey, I need Jesus. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the power of God. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and his, and his father felt him. And he said, the voice is the voice of Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Come on. Oh, you know, I feel. I was talking with my son-in-law one day, and he said, Pops, you know, I feel. I said, time out. He said, what did I say wrong? I said, God didn't call you to feel. He called you to go on what, on what you know in the word of God. Because the word of the word of God is going to expose your adversary and it's going to expose him for everything for what he is because you are light and, and light is shining in a dark world. And whenever you begin to move, that light is shining and it's exposing the adversary that uh, that is coming at you. Sis, he's going to touch your heart coming out through your heartbeat. Come on, I, sis, I can feel your heartbeat. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. I do thank you this morning. Oh, God, strengthen her heart, strengthen her body today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. That is why we fight. That is why some of us has fought so, uh, so hard within the last few days. It's like, God, if I can just get back to the house of God, if I can just get back into a place of worship, I know I'm going to conquer this thing, God. I know I'm going to wrestle this thing down today and put it under my feet, God. But, God, I am in the middle of a battle, and I don't know which way to go. Look, look. Look, it's time to lift your hands and just say, Lord, here I am, God. I am discerning the power of my adversary. So, I'm, God, there is a greater power that is within me. I am not running. I'm not giving up. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping until I win. I am not stopping until Jesus, he is the Lord of my life. Come on, I'm not throwing in this towel. Honey, you want to fight? It's time to get down and fight. It's time to look at your adversary. I'm not going to be quiet. Hey, I'm going to lift my voice. I don't care. There are, there, are, there are people that'll tell you, hey, be quiet. No, honey, you ain't got time to be quiet. Somebody needs to hear that Jesus is a healer. Look, look, I got big hands, and I was sitting beside this man, and I was clapping my hands, and he said, Brother Phillips. I said, yes, sir. He said, man, you clap loud. I said, yes, sir. And I said, uh, does it bother you? And he said, yes. I said, well, move. You don't know where I come from. Come on, you don't know where I've been. I know what Jesus has done for me. There is somebody waiting to hear your testimony about what Jesus has done. Verse 23 says, and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. 
Discerning the spirits is one of the greatest gifts that God can give everybody. We better know our adversary and know his voice. Look at a coyote. A coyote will come up into a yard and he will lure dogs out of the light. And then once they get out of the beam of the light of the house, then the other dogs come out and grab that dog and they devour that dog because it stepped out of the bounds of the light. He's trying to draw you out of a place of safety. Come on out here. I don't have time. There is a dying world that needs to hear the gospel. I don't have time. I don't have time to play church. There are time wasters. There are spirits that are time wasters, and yet they are trying to waste your time and wrestle you down and keep you from enjoying the things of God. They want to fill your mind with their problems to where that the only thing that you hear is their problems to where that we are not feeling the power and the presence of God. There is an adversary, and he's after the anointing, and he's not going to stop until he gets it. He lost his anointing. He is after yours. He's after you. Hallelujah. God, hello, sis. Come on, stand your feet for me, please. God is bringing complete deliverance. Things is not going to come back into your mind again in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, sis. It's been a battle. It's been a struggle. It's been a fight, God. I've been dealing with this. I've been dealing with that, God. But, uh, but today, I know the enemy's voice, God. Hey, God, I'm going to win this today. I'm getting victory today in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Jesus. The pool says there is about four, four different people and they have a pool on you and God is destroying the yoke of this pool in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch this. I'm going to take about four or five steps and just holler real loud at me. Go ahead. Now, I have a choice that I can stop and see what's getting my attention. Or I can keep looking at the things of God. You know you want another joint. You know you want another drink. You know you want to go party one more time. You know you want to go and fornicate one more time. I'm sorry. Look, hey, I'm in the house of God. I don't have time to quit. I'm on this wall. I don't have time. Hey, I come to worship. I come to see God do, do something for me. He's after you. Don't let him in. Because he'll, he'll perch on your shoulder. You know you can't do it. You know you can't do it. You know you can't do it. Go back and study the famous cuckoo bird. Very, very, smart, and very smart animal. Don't ever raise its own young. It finds a nest. And it lays its, its egg in that nest. Much bigger than the other birds, mo most of the time it's a thrash bird. They hatch. That mama don't know no difference because it, because it throws one of her eggs out so it can lay his egg, its egg. 
She nurses it. She hatches it. And then she feeds it because she thinks it's hers. And then as time, it's bigger than the other birds. So it starts pushing them out of the nest. So it is the only one that is in the nest. And so now mama is feeding something that is not hers. The enemy gets into our mind and he sows a seed in our mind and he moves on and he don't stop. You know why he don't stop? Because he knows that you are going to detect him, but he catches you in a very low moment and he sows something in your mind and then he steps away and during time and over time that thing begins to take root and in just one moment it's just a word. It's a word here. You know you might as well give up. You know you you might as well stop. And then, it, and then it's not long until this thing is setting on your shoulder completely uh, because we are feeding this thing uh, because we think that it is the voice of the Lord. And yet it is not the voice of the Lord. It is a voice of an adversary that is so to seed in you and is trying to keep you out of the presence of the Lord. The devil will come to church with you. He, look, he'll, he'll shout with you. He, he'll speak in a tongue with you, but he will not get in the fire of God with you. He's after your mind. And when he's finished, he throws you in a ditch for dead, and he's gone. Nehemiah 4, four and two and he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said what, what do these feeble Jews will they fortify themselves will they sacrifice will they make an end in a day will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned here's the only way that a seed can ever grow. It's got to go through the heat and it's got to go through the fire of death. Some of you in here, you, you've been under the rubbish. You've been under the rubble. You've been burned. You've been stepped on. You've been talked about. You've been slandered. People has used your voice as a byword. I mean your name as a byword day in and day out. And yet God is going, hey, I'm going to take something that, uh, that is under the rubbish and I'm going to do a great work with it. Come on. So, you can't build on something. You cannot build upon a brick that has never been through the fire because it's untempered. But once you've been through the fire, there is something about the voice of God that is so true and is so genuine and is... And it speaks so, uh, 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 so loud in you. You know why? Because I'm not the same anymore. Hey, hey, I've been hurt. I've been healed. I've been broken. I'm mended. My God, I've been let down. I am picked up. Everybody has threw me away, but Jesus has picked me up. I'm no longer the same. I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. And yet hell still don't stop. There's a boy in Brother Webb's church in Milton, Florida, and his name is Michael Randolph. His daddy OD'd on heroin and died, and he took the same needle that his daddy OD'd on, and, and he tried to OD himself. His mama got to him from what I can understand in the story. She got to him and got him to the hospital and it brought him out. The boy stepped into the house of God and God delivered that boy and filled him with the Holy Ghost. He has a crazy faith. Some of his old friends were coming down the road one day and they held up a bag of cocaine and said, pull over. So he pulled over and they... And they got out and said, come on, man, let's go and get high. And this is what he said. Let me tell you, I have been on a high. I have not come down 
Brother, we hadn't seen you for a year. Let me tell you about this high that I've been on. I, I'm not crazy. I hadn't lost my mind. I've gained money. I've gained influence because Jesus filled me with the Holy Ghost. Come on, it is... It is a high that never comes down. It just gets greater. Hey, it gets greater and it gets greater. Nineteen eighty, a man run into a he run into a restaurant and he started screaming, "I'm rich! I'm rich! God fill me with the Holy Ghost! I'm rich!" They run him out of that restaurant. He went to another restaurant. I'm rich. I'm rich. He does everything he can to try to silence your voice. An easily forged weapon. Sambalat and Tobiah sought to bring a discouragement through criticism. Ah. This little boy, his mama had a favorite duck. And he took a stick and he killed mama's duck. And him and his sister took turns washing the dishes. And man, he was just tore up. And so... Come her time to wash dishes, she would look at her brother and say, duck. He washed dishes. Finally, he went and confessed to mama. She said, son, I know you killed my duck, but I do forgive you. And come the next time around, sister said, duck. He said, duck, I duck all you want to. I done repented to mama. Come on, it's time to tell that adversary, duck, duck all you want to. Scream all you want to. You accuse me of what I used to be any time you want to because I don't live there anymore. I'm a brand new creature. I'm not the same drug addict. I'm not the same alcoholic. Come on. I'm a dancer. I'm a shouter. I'm a tongue talker. I'm a praiser. I'm a man of God. Come on. I'm, hey, hey, I'm a child of God. An easily forged we a weapon is ridicule. Nothing is easier than to turn good things, even the best things, into ridicule. And it's the favorite weapon in the wrong of weakness. Ridicule will overcome. A ridicule is only overcome by prayer and determination. That's the only way it is to, come on, you're not going to get over, it. hey, hey, any other way. Look, it ain't happening. Preacher, you don't understand. No, time, time, time. Come on, I'm hearing thoughts. Preacher, you don't understand. Time out here. Why are we putting God in a box? Man was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he said, Lord, I invite you into the best room of my house. And he walked out and he shut the door. Every night he was tormented and tormented and tormented and tormented. And he went to Jesus and he said, Jesus, I don't understand. You, you fill me with your spirit and I brought you into the best room of my house. And, and then this is what G, uh, Jesus said. You only made me Lord over this one room. And he said, God, all that I have is thine. The devil come knocking on the door and he was getting ready to torment him again. And Jesus said, may I help you? And he said, look, I got the wrong address. Come on. It's up to you to create the atmosphere. It's up to you to get into the word of God. Come on, your pastor can preach to you and preach to you, but until you get a hold of it, honey, See, what's on the outside of me can never defeat me spiritually. It's what's on the inside of me that, uh, that can defeat me. You pull up to a casket and blow a horn, he ain't gonna move. 
If he does, I'm gone. He's dead. Why do we allow the dead things of our past to come and keep us from entering into the presence of the Lord? Jesus looked at everybody around Lazarus and said, loosen him. Lazarus couldn't loosen himself. He looked at them and said, loosen him. Why? What are you saying? The words that you accuse him of, repent of it now. Go and get it right. You see this man loose. He come out of the tomb. He is alive. Hell wants to stop. Heaven wants to redeem. Hell, hell wants to tear down. Heaven is building. When we let him have his way, everything changes. You never change directions until you let God do it. Sis coming down through your kidneys, not both, but just one. He needs to touch your body this morning coming down through, and even the flow is more on your right side than it is on your left side. And sis and the Holy Ghost, <coughs> excuse me, look, it's not corona, it's just virus. I, I mean sinus, okay? We okay? <laughs> Pastor said, brother, you in sinus valley. Praise God. But sis, he's going to touch you. Coming down, the flow's going to get better. Water, 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 water. It's time to drink water, 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 water. Coming all the way across the stomach, sis, he needs to heal. And even in the stomach muscles in the setting up and in the getting up, sis, right in the name of Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. I thank you this morning. I thank you this morning. In the name of Jesus, I do thank you, Lord. You're walking to get better, sis, when this service is over. I see the Holy Ghost strengthen your legs and your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. There's been a problem in your walking. There's been a problem in your standing. I thank you today, oh God, you bring back the balance right in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, sir, big fellow in the back pew. Come on, stand your feet. You got the long beard. Come on, stand your feet for me, sir. If you will let the Holy Ghost this day, sir, this day, he will set you free from an old situation, sir. You've been blaming yourself over and over and over. Come on, it's time to let go of yesterday. I've got to live in the right now. I can't live in the yesterday. I can't live in the past, but I'm able to live right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Sir, if you will let God, every bit of this pressure will start coming off your heart and coming off your mind. He will change your direction and do and do something for you that the world cannot do and that has set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I do praise you, Lord. I'm not crazy, okay? I don't think I am. Hello, young man. Come on, you was praying a while ago. Come on, stand your feet. Quit going backwards and start going forwards. Bury your head into the word of God and watch what Jesus Christ does. Read it, get a hold of it, digest it. You may not understand it. Read it, look it up, break it down. Get, get it in your spirit, son, and watch what Jesus Christ should do for you and with you in, a G in Jesus' name. I do thank you, Lord. You, you may be seated. Hello, sir, come on, stand to your feet for me. Uh, yes, sir, both of you, come on, stand up. Come on, hello, come on, chop, chop. Brother, you're going to win that man in the name of Jesus Christ. I see you talking to a man. Come on to the house of God with me. Come on to the house of God with me. And if God changed me, sir, he, he'll change you. You done been talking to him. Hello? He's coming. Come on, he's coming. Don't look back. 
Whatever's in the yesterdays, let it be in the yesterdays. I'm God, I'm in the right now. I cannot deal with what I've done repented over God because it's under the blood. I thank you this day. Sir, let, let him order your steps and lead you in the name of G, G, Jesus Christ. Come on, he will turn this around and I see men that are pulling their hands back away from you and letting you go, sir, in the name of G, Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. They are trying to hold you and hold you and hold you. Come on, I just see God. He's just releasing their hands right in the name of G, Jesus Christ. I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. I praise you today. Hello, young man with, with the blue shirt and tie. Come on, stand to your feet. Let him have his way. You're butting a wall that has been there, and it's about, sir, this thing has been coming down and coming down and coming down, but, but sir, it's time to break through that wall completely, God. I can, I can, I can. I'm able, Lord. I'm going to see it, God. I'm going to obtain this ministry, Lord. I'm going to walk in it, God. I'm going to pray it through. Sure, I see fam family and family, and they are pulling for you. They're not pulling against you. There has been an elder that has prayed from you, uh, uh, that has prayed for you from birth, and it's time to let them prayers work. Sure, in the name of G Jesus Christ, quit beating yourself up uh, right over yesterday. In the name of G Jesus Christ, I do thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I do. Ha, ha. Come on, let's just lift our hands a minute. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have just a little bit more time. They're going to quit pulling on you, sure, and they're going to leave you alone in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. I see you sitting down and I see a Bible study and I see the word of God shining into your eyes and that is a revelation, sir. And God is going to reveal to you who he, who he really is. You watch what Jesus Christ does. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying, okay? I'm really trying. I'll get back to the message in a minute. Man, I'm gonna tell you, it's got longer since last Sunday I'll come across that front. <laughs> sir, if you'll step out of that seat and begin to praise him in a dance, he will turn a situation around for you you've been praying for. Come on, this thing is not gonna get the best of you. Come on, sir, it's not going to win. God is bringing direction to you and your household. He is loosening, your, uh, sir, your household. God, I'm tired of dealing with the same problem, the same situation. My God, I do think, come on, hey, I need a man. I need a man who will shout with him. I need a man who will dance with him. this beat down spirit that is trying to beat your mind down that is trying to beat you down that's coming off of you today in the name of Jesus Christ I do thank you Lord yes God you ready to see him I really do something for you take off come on somebody get out of his way here comes speedy Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes! Just when we think the words of our adversary has just about ready to beat us down, Jesus steps in and says, wait a minute, you're mine. I bought you with my blood, you're mine. I'm pulling you out of the gutter, I'm pulling you out of this mindset. It's changing today. <laughs> Hallelujah, God. I do thank you this morning. Come on, I'm trying to wind down. I really am. 
We got service tonight in Jesus. I'm about to go eat my Wheaties. Hallelujah, Lord. Sir, you're going to win that young man. Come on, you're going to win that boy. Come on, you're going to win that boy. I see him talking in a heavenly language. Come on, sir, you're going to win that boy. You're going to win that boy. When we come to a point that we think that we can't, you know when we're, you know when we are strongest, when we are really our strongest, when we're at our weakest. Because when I'm weak, he's strong. Come on, he's strong. He's strong. Sis, he, uh, sis he'll change in a household if you'll let him. He'll do it. He'll bring the fear off. This has been broken, and this has been broken, and this is not good, and this is not good, and this is not good. God needs to steady the household. Come on, he needs to steady the finance. He needs to steady you. There is a fear, and it's trying to get a hold of you, and it's trying to get a hold of that child you got in your hands. Come on, that fear is. But sis, it's time to let faith. Come on, it's time to let faith. It's time to let Jesus begin to step in. Sis, come on, brother. Come on, girl. Come on, sis. Come on. Come on. That is the Holy Ghost. Let it move. Let it move now. Come on, there it is. There it is. Young lady who would dance for her. Come on, I need somebody who would dance for her. Dancing is a celebration. God, I'm gonna celebrate you. My God. Hard, hard. I'm finna land this plane. Everything that glitters is not gold. And every voice, it is not the voice of the Lord. We got to distinguish the voice of the Lord. You have heard your pastor so much that he can be in a store and you can be in a store and he can say something and you recognize his voice. But there's another voice that's trying to bring deception and he wants to tear down what God's done in you. See, if he can get in your mind, then he causes an unstableness. And the unstableness begins to, you begin to attack yourself. And that's what he wants. He wants you to attack your own self with your own words. Come on, stand with me. This is why the Lord allows internal attacks to uh, to take place so that we will not We will not and cannot ignore them. They must be confronted and conquered. The voice within. Come on, it's it's not the things that are from without that's going to destroy you. It's the things that are from within. Jesus, Jesus. God, I've tried to do it my way. I've tried to figure it out, God. It's not figuring out God. Just like the cuckoo bird, the enemy has laid something in my spirit. 
Psalms 55 and verse 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Listen to what the devil said in Acts 15, 19 and verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. Who are you? Have you been in the presence of the Lord enough that when you open your voice, when you open your mouth, the enemy knows instantly who you are? Some here within the sound of my voice, the enemy has, has attacked you. And he's attacked you and he's attacked you. You know his voice. We drove home from Georgia and as she's, as she's beginning to play. We drove home from Georgia the spirit was walking around the motel room screaming at me. Followed me home. Got to my bedroom at home. We lived in Tennessee at the time. and No windows in the bedroom. And this, this thing said, hey, hey. I said, What? And then I opened my eyes and it was almost face to face. So you can't let him see you fear. Because the very moment that he sees you fear, that is why he has such a hideous look. Have you ever been outside around your home that you've had for years and then all of a sudden something begins to rattle you and it shakes you? Because it's in the dark. I opened my eyes and this thing said, I'm gonna kill you. I said, Good, I won't have to put up with you no more. You cannot let it get into your mind. I said, Dude, you got two choices. You can get in that corner and shut your mouth, and I'll deal with you in the morning. Or you can get your weapons and get and get your carcass out of my house. Some of the best sleep that I've ever had is when the Lord has come in and he says, shh, I want to talk to you. Stressed, dealing with stuff, going through problems, fighting junk in my mind. I never knew that I, Pastor Smith, I thought I was dying. I thought I could not make it through it. And there were nights that the Lord would just slip in and just put his hands on my head and go, shh, I want to talk to you. I thank you today, God, for the peace of God that passes all understanding. Perfect love cast out fear. The perfect love of Christ Jesus cast out the fear of the enemy. Some here within the sound of my voice, you have wrestled and wrestled and wrestled. But you're still here. You are still here. Keep fighting this battle. Here is an altar. And you can bring it to God. See, this is where he's trying to keep, this is where he's trying to keep you from right here. He's trying to keep you from the altar. Because it's at the altar that commitments are made. It's at the altar that I can bring the very thing that's given me trouble and lay it down on this altar and walk away from it and give it to God. Come on, will you come? Defeating the voice from, from within. God, I dealt with I'm not good enough. The enemy has got in my ears and he's called me all kind of names. He's tried to make me quit, but I wouldn't quit. Hallelujah.
you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Today, God, today, today, Lord, today is going to change, and it's going to change forever. I'm coming out of this, God. I'm going to be greater. I'll be stronger. I'll be more powerful, Lord. I'm not giving up. Today, God, today is my day of change. This is my day. God, this is my day. It's me again, oh Lord. I stand in the need of prayer today, God. I stand in the need. I need the power of the Holy Ghost today, oh Lord, to touch my mind. Lord, I cannot make. God, I cannot do this alone. I must have you. Touch my heart, I'll take control. 